Welcome. My name is Isabu Iqbal, and I'm an educational developer at the Center for Teaching, Learning, and Technology at the University of British Columbia. This video outlines things to think about to help ensure a successful post-observation meeting. It's for anyone who's new to formative peer reviews of teaching, or anyone who might need a reminder on what to do. Ideally, the post-observation meeting happens seven to 10 days after the classroom observation of teaching. Some people, however, do it immediately after the classroom observation. The advantage of waiting is that both the reviewer and the reviewee will have had time to reflect on what happened during the classroom teaching. It's good to set aside about an hour for the post-observation meeting and think about finding a place where you can have a confidential conversation. You also might want to think about a place where you can equal out any power differentials. So it might be, for example, better to have the meeting in the reviewee's office rather than in the reviewer's office. The reviewer will also want to think about whether they plan to send any documentation to the reviewee ahead of the post-observation meeting. The advantage of doing that is that the reviewee will come into that meeting knowing more or less what to expect, which might help them feel less nervous. The disadvantage is that the reviewee might misinterpret something that the reviewer has written and that could set a, a bad tone for the meeting. You want to pay attention to tone. Remember the eye contact, the body language, the smiling. And then you want to invite the reviewee's reflections. But before you invite their reflections, it might be helpful to offer a few positive words. Remember that when you're giving your feedback, you want to focus on the reviewee's goals. And what if there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you could comment on? Well, really try to limit it. Think about their goals, start there, because you don't want to overwhelm them. Make sure also that you invite their questions. And when you're giving your feedback, try to be as specific as possible. Think of examples from that classroom teaching that you can offer back to the reviewee. Before you wrap up the post-observation meeting, think about next steps. How can you help the instructor continue with their professional growth in teaching? Don't just leave them dangling. Let them know what kind of resources are available, whether they can contact you again, or what else is available for them. Thank you for watching this video. Please be in touch with questions or suggestions. I'd love to hear from you.